Good morning, welcome to day four of Vlogmas. So it's Monday the 4th of December here and my house is very quiet this morning after quite a busy weekend because my children are back at school today and um, the bus morning's actually been quite busy even though my house is quiet so I dropped my children off at school, came back home and the food shop arrived so I got that all sorted, that always happens on a Monday morning and then I decided to go out for a run it was really nice to get out actually because I haven't been out for a few days because it has been so cold, um, a bit too cold for running for my liking. Um, but today it's a bit milder. There was a bit of water in the air when I went out, but thankfully it didn't rain on me. But actually looking out the window now, I think it has just started to rain. So I obviously timed it well. So it's nice to be back um, inside now the rain has arrived. So it's a nice start to the morning. I took a bit of footage of my running route. So I'll include that um, in a little bit. Hopefully you'll enjoy seeing a little bit more of um, where I live here. So yeah, I thought I'd do a little bit of fishing when I was running, which can be a bit tricky, um, but I did my best. So yeah, I'll pop that in a little bit. So yeah, let me start off the video as usual with what we found Elf up to this morning. So this morning we got down and found a big queue winding all the way through our house, a queue of toys, and all of the toys seemed to have a dog with them. And when we got to the front of the queue, we found Elf um, with a little, what looked like he'd set up a little bit of a puppy or dog training business um, or activity. I'll put a picture up so you can see what he'd set up, some little dog agility items and that sort of thing. He borrowed them all from our Barbies and I think he'd also borrowed, and we have a Ken who is a dog trainer. He's got a little dog training outfit and Elf had borrowed Ken's outfit. So I'm impressed Elf managed to get into the outfit, but it did seem to fit him okay. So as you can see, he's got a little... Ken's little shirt on with little paw prints on and then a really cute little bum bag with little dog treats in. So Elf was fully equipped and it looked like it was quite a popular event because as I said, there was a very big queue with all different toys and dogs. So yeah, it was quite a busy scene downstairs this morning and my children were quite keen to find that and quite tickled that Elf had borrowed Ken's whole outfit and managed to squeeze into it. The shorts looked like they'd been a bit of a squeeze to get on and we were a bit of a squeeze to get off again um, because Ken's codes have been returned to Ken now and else back to normal. So that was how we started our morning. And then I'll move on to what I'm wearing today. And I thought I'd choose something quite bright um, because I think the last couple of days I've worn more muted colours. So I have got a bit of a muted top underneath, but I've gone for a, quite a Christmassy pinafore today. And um, I'll mention the top underneath first. This is a Freya top by Tin in the Buttons from the stretch book. It's one of my favourites. I wear them a lot through winter, as you'll probably know. Just great layering pieces. And I went for quite a yeah, sort of simple, plain one for underneath my red pinafore. And I made this in a lovely fabric. Um, I've got this fabric in a Freya top in two different colours. It's one from Minerva. It's this sort of quite wide um, rib knit fabric. It's a cotton fabric. And it's quite a nice, cosy fabric to wear. It's nice and stretchy, so perfect for a close fitting top. And I quite like the the rib, um, the sort of rib texture of it. This is just a grey colourway, but I'll link this fabric down below. The Minerva's got it in quite a few colours. I've had a look a couple more times and I'm really tempted to buy more colours because I, I really like it and it is nice and cosy. Um, so that's what I've got underneath. Um, I just make a straight size two in the frayer top, which is pretty much bang on my measurements. Um, I find, well, I guess it's stretchy, so it doesn't need to be perfectly true to size. It can kind of stretch over you, but I, I find that size works quite well. I mean, it isn't, isn't too tight. It's kind of nice and fitted. And then I'm wearing this pinafore, which is another tin in the buttons pattern, actually, which I've got out. Um, hang on, I've got the wrong pattern out. I'm going to find the right pattern now. One second. So I've got out the tin in the buttons cocoa there, but this is not the cocoa pinafore. It is the um, Clio pinafore. I really like this pattern. I think it's one of Till in the Buttons' older patterns. Um, but I just think you can't go wrong with a classic pinafore dress. Here it is. It's just very a straight fit pinafore with little optional sort of pockets on the front and the back. And it's got these straps and you can add, I think, like either a button or a buckle or like a sort of, yeah, buckle, is that what you call it? I've gotten for these little silver ones here, which I thought went quite nicely with the red. And I've got the front pocket and I think, did I go for it? Yeah, I've added on back pockets too. And this um, pattern has been added to Tilly and the Buttons extended size range. So it's available in a UK 6 to 20, 34, sorry. So yeah, it's got a really nice size range and it just comes together really nicely. It's one of their sewing patterns for beginners. And I remember making my first Clio when I was very new to sewing. Um, I think my first Clio doesn't have, it isn't overlocked on the inside. It's all sewn in a zigzag stitch, but it's still going strong. Um, but I remember really enjoying how the pattern came together. Um, but yeah, this is a slightly more recent one. And I made it in this lovely 
um, sort of cord or needle cord fabric. I think it came from a, an online shop called Ditto Fabrics here in the UK. I have bought from every now and then over the years. They have quite interesting fabrics and always a different mix. So this won't be available anymore because I think they get their fabrics in and they sort of sell out and get different ones in um, quite a lot as far as I'm aware. So this one came from a few years ago still, and it, it's lovely. It's a, the softest, most velvetiest needle cord ever. Um, if I sort of stroke it, it just feels so lovely. Um, it's got a real sort of sheen to it, and I really like the red colour. Um, so yeah, it's nice and comfy to wear. And I think with this one, I made a size two on the waist and then graded out to a size three on the hips because my hips are between a size two and a three. So I thought best to have a little bit more room there, particularly with like a corduroy fabric where it could kind of chafe and maybe ride up a bit. I do often actually put a little sort of slip skirt underneath this when I'm wearing it, but I haven't got it on today. I might go and put that on in a moment actually before I head out a bit later and start walking along and feeling it riding up against my tights. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm wearing today. And I'll put a picture in so you can see what it looks like on. It's just a really nice cozy outfit. And I think that the um, frayer top and the clear pinafore go really well together. The frayer top hasn't got such a broad size range, but I think I mentioned before another great alternative to the frayer top, which is quite similar, is the True Bias Nico top. And that has a similar sort of mock sort of turtleneck neckline and a sort of fitted um, top. And it also you can make it into a dress, which is quite nice actually. And I think quite, I've seen quite a few Nico dresses recently. So I think that's quite on trend at the moment, maybe like a kind of sort of fitted jersey dress that comes down a bit longer. Um, so yeah, that is a great alternative pattern as well. So I'll link that one down below as well when I link all my patterns and fabrics like I try to do in every video. So, but yeah, that is why I'm wearing today and that's a picture of me wearing it. Um, I have also got actually a cardigan that I'll probably put on. I'm a bit hot still from having gone for a run right now. I'm still cooling down. Um, but when I, when I do probably cool down, I think I'll be popping this on when I go out a little bit later, which is another one of my knitted makes, which I'm really trying to get on, like I mentioned. So I thought I'd wear this one today because I thought it would go quite nicely with the red and the grey. This is another cardigan I made. I'll sort of put it around so you can see it here. Um, and this one I made using a kit from We Are Knitters. Um, I made a few We Are Knitters kits. I really enjoy them. I love getting a knitting kit with the pattern and the yarn and everything you need inside. And this kit is called the Hackney, Car the Hackney Cardigan Kit. So yeah, it's a cardigan, quite a sort of relaxed fit, sort of dropped shoulders cardigan. Again, a bit like my um, downtown cardigan yesterday. It doesn't have buttonholes. It's just designed to be worn open. But I guess you could always add buttonholes if you wanted. Um, but yeah, I just wear it open. Um, and it's knitted in this really lovely wool, which is the We Are Knitters Merry Wool, which is a slightly more sort of chunkier wool than the Merry Fine yarn I was talking about yesterday and it's just the loveliest softest wool it's merino wool and it's just so lovely and soft and cozy to wear you can probably see it's a really squidgy and um yeah lovely to wear and, and I've made it this blue colour I've got a um mustard version too which I might get on later in the month um but yeah it's just really nice and comfy it's knit up in this moss stitch I think which I think has a lovely texture to it and it was a really nice one one to knit up I really enjoyed knitting it so yeah, I'm going to pop that on a little bit later when I do feel a bit cooler um, over my outfit. So I think that'll go quite nicely. Kind of the, I've got lots of texture going on today with the rib knit and the, the cord the needle cord and this moss stitch. So yeah, that is what I'm wearing today. Oh, the next thing I wanted to share actually is something my son wanted me to pop in the video, which is that we've been working on our um, Christmas puzzle again this year, which I think if you watch my Vlogmas two years ago, we had out that year and then last year, um, we had a break from it. We got we got to get out again this year, so we're working on that. So I thought I'd put in a couple of pictures so you can see how it's progressing. So that's how we sort of started on the first night. I think we started on the first day, December the first, and then we did a bit more last night. And this is how it's looking now. So it's gradually coming together. It's a really fun puzzle with lots of cool things going on in it. I'll grab the box actually so you can see how it should end up. One second. So this is the puzzle here. It is a Mike Jupp's I Love Christmas puzzle. So it's a really fun puzzle. There's loads going on, as you can see. Um, so my son and daughter really like it because of all the little details. It's basically just mayhem in a sort of little snowy Christmassy village. So yeah, that's what it's going to look like when it's finished. And we're hoping to finish it off before Christmas. So I'll update you on how we're getting on with that. But it's been quite a nice sort of cosy family activity to work on in the evenings. And the next thing I wanted to share was a sewing project I'm hoping to start on today. I'm also planning to carry on working on my DD pullover, 
which I talked all about on Friday and I'll update you with how I'm getting on on that. But this is quite a quick little project that I wanted to get done sooner rather than later. And it's one for my son, actually. He's been sort of starting to come out every now and then on a little run with me at the weekend, um, just like a little gentle run. We don't run too far, but we get a bit of music playing on my phone. It's quite a nice way to start like a Saturday, just getting out if the weather's not too bad and going running with him. And he's quite keen to carry on um, doing it while the weather's getting a bit cooler. Um, so I said I'd make him a little hat that would be sort of keeping his head warm, but not too hot. He's got like quite a thick winter hat, which he'd wear if we're going on a winter walk. But for running, I thought maybe something a bit lighter weight would keep him warm, but wouldn't overheat him. So what I thought I'd make is something similar to what I made myself, I think last year when I was doing this um, sort of charity night walk with some of my friends, I wanted like a little hat to wear to keep me warm. So I made this little beanie hat here. Um, just a really basic jersey beanie hat made with little sort of sections and it's sort of it's in sort of in you can wear it either way it's kind of um all fully lined so it's a very simple beanie hat nice and um easy to pop on just made out of cotton jersey so I said I'd make him a version of this too but he wanted something a bit more exciting than my black version which I just made out of some leftover black jersey fabric I had he decided he'd like his made out of one of his favourite fabrics, which is this green Where's Wally fabric, um, which I think he might have been wearing as a t-shirt a couple of days ago on Vlogmas. I've got quite a lot of the fabric, although actually the green, I haven't got so much of it left now, um, but there's plenty to squeeze out a hat um, for running, so I think it'll look really cool actually. So the pattern I'm planning on using is the same pattern I used for my beanie hat, which is this one here. It is called the Cute Beanie by Gina Renee Designs. And there are a couple of different options included in this pattern. It's just a free pattern and um, you can download it online or link it down below. There's a sort of lined and a long lined hat. I'm going to make the lined one for him too because it just seems nice and simple and quite nice to be able to turn it both ways. Um, so yeah, that is my plan and I, I tried my version on his head at the weekend and it's slightly large and I made mine as the medium so I'm going to size down to the small for him and I'm hoping that'll fit him just about right. So yeah, that is my plan. It should be a nice quick product. I just need to trace out there's just one pattern piece, um, just this pattern piece here, which I think looks like the bottom of an iron. Um, and I have to cut, I think, eight of them, four for the outside and four for the lining. Um, and then just, it should be quite a nice quick sew. So yeah, I'm hoping to get that one done sooner rather than later so it's ready for the next time we want to go out running together. But yeah, I think it'll look really funky in this West Wally fabric. So that's a very small sewing project. I'm hoping to get that sort of traced out and cut out today. Um, I'm not sure I have time to start sewing it. And I do also want to do a little bit of testing of my DD fabric on the overlocker. So I'm going to try to do that later as well. So I'll see how I get on. But I need to finish up now, actually, for now, because I'm going to head out in a moment. I'm meeting a couple of friends for lunch today. It's one of my friend's birthdays. So we're going to go for lunch in town to celebrate that. So I've got her little present I need to go and wrap up first. I actually got this, um, her something, when we were in Disneyland Paris earlier in the year because my friend is a really, really big fan of Disney. She's got lots of, um, she's got Disney everything, Disney bags, Disney um, tops, all sorts. So I thought while I was there, I had to get something for her and I've kind of kept it until her birthday now to give it to her. So it was when we were in Disneyland Paris this year, it was their 30th anniversary. So there was lots of um, Disney 30 merchandise. So I got her this tote bag, which I thought was quite sweet and hopefully something she'll get some good use out of. It's really cute. It's got this sort of the Disney 30 logo that they had everywhere when we were there. And lots of sort of classic Disney characters on it. And then these kind of little stripy handles. It's lined with nice purple fabric. So I'm going to go and get that wrapped up for her. I hope she'll like that. And I'm going to head into town. So I'm going to leave you now with some footage of my run before I pop back on again later. It was funny, actually, even my run felt festive this morning. It's definitely starting to feel like Christmas because um, on my way around and when I was going through one of the residential areas, I passed a man putting up Christmas lights on his tree. So that was really nice. And I saw some other Christmas lights that were not actually turned on, but up ready to pretend on the evening. So it was quite nice. And even my run fit made me feel Christmassy today, which was good. So yeah, I'll finish off here and then I'll pop on a little bit later when I'm back for lunch. So I'll see you a little bit later. Bye. <laughs>
home now. I had a really nice time with my friends catching up and celebrating my friends' birthdays. So that was really lovely. And then I got back home and got stuck in for a few um, bits on the sewing front. So I thought I'd pop on now and share with you what I've been doing. So the first thing I did was to trace out the pattern piece for my son's beanie hat. And then I cut out all of the eight pieces of the fabric that's needed to sew that hat together. So I've got them all here, um, ready to go, ready to sew. Um, so that was not quite nice and quick and speedy to do that. And I'll probably get that sewn up over the next couple of days. I'd like to get it sewn up ahead of the weekend in case he does want to go on a run then and he can give it a try. So yeah, that was a nice quick one. And then I moved on to my DD pullover. And this is the DD pullover in case you missed my day one vlogmas. That is what I'm making. I'm making the version with the arms, really cozy pullover, the zip at the front. And I've cut out the pattern pieces, or at least I've cut out most of them. I've done, cut out the front and back and the sleeves and this kind of collar pattern piece. I haven't done the cuffs and the bottom band yet. I thought I'd see what the fit was like um, before I decide whether I want to widen them at all because the fabric's quite bulky. So I thought they might need a bit of widening, but so I've left those. I've got plenty of fabric left for those. One thing I did realise after I cut out the fabric pieces, which is a bit silly um, of me, is that this fabric has kind of like a nap, a bit like a corduroy fabric, in that it kind of is smooth one way if you stroke it and like rough the other way. And I think if I'd thought about it or realised that before I started to cut it out, I probably had, would have actually cut it out so it was kind of smooth downwards, like I would generally with a corduroy fabric. But um, I didn't happen to cut it out that way up. I cut it out, cut it out the other way up. So all of my pattern pieces, this is like a sleeve. You can see it's kind of the fur is almost going this way a little bit rather than that way. So when I realised, um, yeah, I was a little bit annoyed with myself um, for not having realised that before. But luckily, all the pattern pieces I did cut in the same di direction. So they all are the same. And actually, now I've had a bit of a moment to think about it. I don't mind really because... I know there's no rule in which we have to do it. You can do it whichever way you prefer. And actually, I think it will look a little bit more fluffy this way. Um, if it was that way, I think it will look a bit more smooth. Um, and I do quite like the idea of it being a little bit more fluffy looking with the fabric kind of pointing up slightly. So, you know, I'm, I'm sort of um, yeah, going to go with it being a, a happy accident. Um, and I think it will look nice like that. It just won't be as smooth to stroke that way. But I won't be stroking it. I'll just be wearing it. So, um, yeah. And I do remember quite recently actually watching a video you know, Lauren from Gatha Vigani does her weekly videos in the shop floor where she shares new fabrics and answers questions. And she had this lovely um, stretch velvet fabric in. And she was saying how generally she would think of cutting that fabric so that the nap went downwards, but she held the fabric up against her and thought the colour um, was more sort of vivid, maybe the other way up. And she thought it worked better. So she cut it the other way up the way you wouldn't normally think of cutting. So if you stroked, it would kind of be rough and you'd sort of smooth upwards. So I thought, well, if Lauren is up for kind of, you know, turning the fabric around and cutting it the way up you wouldn't expect, then any of us can. So yeah, that is what I'm going to go with on that. So I did that. And then I've also had a little play around with an off cut of the fabric on my overlocker. Because originally when I overlocked the edges before I pre-washed this fabric, um, the overlocking, it kind of sort of went a bit, you can probably see here, went a bit wiggly and it didn't really seem to like catch the fabric so well. I just wasn't very pleased with the finish. I mean, it didn't really matter because it was only the edges, but I thought when I start sewing the actual garment, I want to make sure the overlock settings are just right and on the real garment. So I had a little read online about what to do when you're overlocking sort of thicker fabrics. And I generally don't change my overlocker settings too much other than I'll adjust the differential feed. Um, depending on whether I'm sewing with stretch fabrics, I'll turn up a bit higher. And if I'm sewing with like a, a delicate woven, I'll turn it down a bit. But I never really adjusted the length and width of the overlocker stitches. But I was having a little read online and a lot of people recommended when you're sewing with thicker fabrics like this sort of shirt, this faux fur sort of shirt fleece I've got for my DD pullover to actually make the stitch um, longer and wider as well. So I turned both of those settings on my overlocker up to the maximum. And actually it's just come out so much better and I also even turned my differential feed up a little bit higher than I normally would. So I think I turned it up to about 1.5. Um, and I'd usually for like a cotton jersey only have one just a little bit over one. Um, and actually it's given a really nice finish. So you can see here, I think that's a really nice finish on the edge of that um, fabric now. So that is the overlocker stitch with the widest and longest stitch settings and with the differential feed turned up higher. So. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. And I think that's what settings I'm going to go for when I start sewing the garment. So I'm glad to have had a little play on the fabric. I just think that looks so much better. You can see it to come back, looks so much better than my original. 
which did not look so good and definitely very sort of wiggly, as <laughs> you can see. So yeah, it was worth having a little play. And that's one more thing I've got sorted now before I get started sewing that pullover. So that's what I've been up to on the sewing front since I got home. And I'm quite pleased to have made a bit of progress on both of those projects. Yeah, it's good to get that done. And then in terms of my plans the rest of the day, we've got a really busy evening coming up tonight. We've got a few different things on. So firstly, my daughter has brownies and it's the last brownies of the term. So brownies is the precursor to girl guides here. And my daughter joined a little bit earlier this year and she absolutely loves it. She always really looks forward to going along, which is really lovely. And tonight is particularly exciting because on the last brownies of the term, I believe they get some badges that they've earned through the term. And it'll be her first time getting badges she's earned. So far, she's just got her joining badges, um, which are really cute, actually. She's part of a six that I think the name of the six is the hedgehog. So she's got a little hedgehog badge and a couple of badges that show her the name of her brownies group and the district and that sort of thing. But these badges will be a bit different because um, badges they will look different. And I think that'll be quite exciting for her to get them. I'll have some sewing to do to put them on her um, top. So, yeah, that'll be a lot of fun for her. And then my son has um, football training after school. And usually um, he gets home from football training and he'll have a bit of a chill and have his dinner. Um, and either my husband or I will do the drown brownies drop off and pick up while my, my son chills at home with the other one of us. But tonight, um, my son has actually been invited through the school to our local town's Christmas tree dressing ceremony. And I didn't even know um, our local town had a Christmas tree dressing ceremony. So when I got this letter um, from, my, from my son's school telling me he'd been invited, it was totally news to me. Um, but he's really, really pleased to be invited. He's part of the school council at school. And I think four of them were chosen to go along and represent the school at this ceremony. So... Yeah, he was very happy to have been chosen, very, very excited about joining in with that. So I think the plan this evening is, well, he'll get back from football, we'll try and have a bit of a quick dinner, and then we're all going to head out in the car, and my husband will drop me and my son off in town um, so we can get started on the ceremony, and then my husband will take my daughter down to Brownies and then come back and meet us. And then once the ceremony's finished, we'll all go and collect my daughter from Brownies and then head home. So there'll be a lot of toing and froing this evening, but... Yeah, it'll be really interesting to go along to this Christmas tree dressing ceremony that I never even knew took place. Um, and I'll try and get a bit of footage so I can share it with you. Hopefully it'll be nice and festive. It sounds like it will be. So I'll try and get a little bit of footage. But I think I'll finish off this video here and try and get it all edited and uploaded before our hectic evening. And then I'll hopefully share some footage of the Christmas tree dressing ceremony in my video tomorrow. So that is the plan. So I'll finish off this video here. So thank you so much for joining me for another day of Vlogmas. I really, really appreciate you following along. It's lovely to have you along. Um, I hope it's making you feel festive. It's definitely making me feel really festive. And I really appreciate all of your likes and comments. So yeah, thank you so much. So yeah, I'll finish off here and I'll see you again for day five tomorrow. So yeah, I hope you're having a good advent so far and I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye. Thank you.